Welcome to Athar's Garage. In this video, I'll be working on the Team Associated T6.4 Bag 9, so let's get started. First thing we can do is get our pistons onto the shock shafts. Now, there's going to be two different lengths. There's going to be short shaft and long shaft, essentially. So the short shafts are for the front and the long shafts are for the rear. We've got 1.6 piston for the front and 1.8 piston in the rear. So if you take a close look at the pistons, you'll see that this is 1.6 and this one says 1.8 so the 1.8s are going to go in the rear and the 1.6s will go in the front so we're going to need these 2.6 millimeter washers we're also going to need the m2 by 4 button head cap screws for each shock and I highly recommend using some blue Loctite on these screws since I have seen them back out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the 2.6 millimeter washer then we're going to install the piston and we want to install the piston with the numbering facing up. So the way I'm installing it now you can see the numbering. So next we can take our M2 by four button head cap screw, put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. If you put too much, just dab it off. And then we can install that on there. Now we can use some shock pliers to pull the shock shaft and just kind of Snug it up. You don't want to tighten it too much because you can end up bending the piston. So make sure there's no excess blue Loctite on there. And we're going to do the same thing for the rear shocks, except we're going to be using the 2 by 1.8 pistons. Next, we can get our shock bodies ready. So we're gonna set these pistons aside for now. Or we're gonna set the shock shafts and pistons aside. So we have our, you'll notice the difference in shock bodies. The longer one is for the rear. So we're gonna need our shock bottom caps. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with installing the seals on the bottom of the shocks. So I like to use this Protec Premier Blue O-ring grease. Ever since I started using it, I've never had the shocks leak on me, so I would highly recommend it. So we can grab our smaller black O-rings and we can just put a little bit of this blue o-ring grease on here. Additionally, you can just use shock oil for this step, but if you have o-ring grease, use o-ring grease. All right. So basically, just put the o-rings all the way down, just behind where the threads are. So now we can get our spacers and hat bushings off this parts tree. So the first thing we're going to do, and we're going to do th this same thing for all the shocks, is that we're going to take this shock hat bushing and see how it has like a smaller diameter on it. We're going to install this with the smaller diameter facing 
the shock body. And what would be helpful here is maybe taking one of your tools, and making sure that that sits nice and flat at the bottom of your shock. Just like so. So next we're gonna take one of these hex rings and we're just going to, essentially what I like to do is just inject it with O-ring grease and just spread it all over. And then we're gonna go ahead and install that. Next, we're gonna take the shock spacer, which is this piece here. And we're gonna go ahead and install that. Next, we're gonna take another X-ring and do the same thing. Just inject it with some grease or just make sure that it's nicely covered and you can be very liberal with it. You can go ahead and install that. Next, we're gonna install another hat bushing, but this time we're gonna make sure that the smaller diameter is facing away from the shock body. So this will be facing up. And now we can install our shock bottom cap. And that smaller diameter will fit right into this bottom cap, just like that. So we're gonna do the same thing for all the other shocks. And then we can move on. All right, so I'm making sure that these shock bottom caps aren't too tight. Lastly, we're gonna install this 13 millimeter O-ring on the top of the shock bodies. And you don't need to put O-ring grease on here. You can just use uh, shock oil and that'll be fine. So we're gonna just put it on just like that. We're gonna do that for all of them. All right, so now what we can do is we can take our shock fluid, our 30 weight, and we're gonna put a light coat on the shock shaft. So make sure I'm gonna do the front first. So I have a light coat of oil on the shock shaft. I made sure that the lower shock cap is loose. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install this in the shock, what I like to do is rotate and push it through, just like so. And now we can tighten up the bottom shock cap. And that feels nice and smooth, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the other front shock with the shorter shaft, and then we're gonna do the rears with the longer shafts. All right, next we're going to need our shock eyelets. There are three different sizes. There's a zero, a plus two, and a plus four. Uh, we're gonna use the plus twos on both the front and the rear. So just like we did on our turnbuckles, we're going to apply a little bit of oil or grease on the threads. So that way when we install the shock eyelets, they go on nice and easy. So it's on. And now we need to check to make sure that the stroke is where it needs to be. So it's fully out. And this is the front shock. The front shock needs to have 28.5 millimeters of stroke. We didn't add any internal or external spacers. We're at 28.9. So we need to go in 
a little bit more to make it 28.5. Okay, 28.5. And go ahead and install our shock pivot ball. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rear one. So we're going to basically do the same thing, which is apply some oil or some grease on the end. Hold it with shock pliers. Install the shock eyelet. Now the rear needs to have 34.5 millimeters of stroke. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two and then we'll move on to filling up the shocks. All right, so the shocks are built. Now we can get a shock stand and fill them up. I'm gonna go ahead and fill them up about three quarters of the way up. And what I like to do is I'll cycle this about 20 times while rotating the shock shaft to make sure that um, I get any bubbles that are trapped underneath the piston out of there. And you want to make sure that you're not getting close or getting above the fluid fill that's already in there because then you'll grab more air bubbles and get them under the piston. So maybe about 20 or so times just kind of rotate, trying to get everything out of there. But dude, the shocks do feel very smooth. So now if you have, um, like I have this shock vacuum that I'm going to use, it's not necessary to have, but, um, if you don't have one of these, I would recommend that you just let the shock sit for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and use my shock vacuum. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get one similar to this. So while we wait for those to bleed, we're going to get these shock collars ready. So they use the same 13 millimeter um, O-rings. And what you want to do is just take your shock fluid and put a little bit on that O-ring. Make sure you cover it up nice and well. And now we're gonna install the O-ring on the inside of these shock collars. There's a groove for that O-ring. So you can kinda see that groove. And you just slowly work that O-ring in there, just like so. So we're gonna do that for all of them. So I've seen some people skip this step and I wouldn't recommend it. So the O-rings do help and do have a function. So if you don't put the O-rings in, what happens is that the shock collars 
can move on their own and adjust while you're racing. So your ride height and everything could essentially be changing while you're racing. So the O-rings ap apply a little bit of friction on the shock body and prevent these from rotating themselves loose or tightening them up. Well, oh, so that's what those O-rings are for. And I have seen quite a few people not put them in and are wondering why they're having issues with their car. So, all right, so as we're getting ready for the bleeding process, let's get our shock caps ready. So let's get these off the parts tree. And what we want to do here is prepare them for the bleeder screw. So we're just gonna stick the bleeder screw in there and do like a few turns to get the thread started. So that way when you're doing the bleeding process and trying to install the screw, um, it's kind of easier when you're kind of in a rush. So this is just to help prepare for that step. Right, next, we're going to prepare our spring cups. So it looks like we're going to be using the five millimeter offset spring cup. So they come with three different sizes. You've got zero, you got the five millimeter and a nine millimeter. So we're going to use the fives. All right. With all that done, let's take a look at our shocks to see if they are ready. So basically all I'm doing is I'm checking to see if there are any bubbles. So one thing I'll do is I'll cycle it a few times and usually there's a few bubbles that come out from underneath the piston. Now I'll let that sit for a little bit and I'll be right back. All right, so the shocks have been sitting for a while. They're, there's no more air in the fluid that I can see. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and put a drop in the shock cap and we're going to fill up the shock all the way to the top and then just a bit more where you can kind of see it dome up onto the top. All right, so now we can go ahead and install our shock cap and have a microfiber towel ready because it will get a little messy. There we go. So, you can see as I'm tightening this up, having some air bubbles and some fluid start to come out. And that's exactly what you want. And now we're going to use the wrench that was in the turnbuckle bag. And we're going to use this center section here that goes in and holds the shock body. And you can just tighten up the shock cap by hand. I wouldn't try to tighten it more than that. And then now what I like to do is I'll hold it like this and I'll use my pinky to slowly compress the shock. And as I'm doing that, I'll be taking the microfiber towel and I'll be wiping the excess off. So, so I'll have some fluid coming out. And 
I'm fully compressed. And we had some fluid come out, which is what we wanted. And now we're going to install our bleeder screw. So gently install the bleeder screw because it is a small screw going into plastic. So you don't want to over tighten this and strip out the plastic. So as soon as you feel it shouldered up, it's good. And then what I like to do next is I'll cycle the shock, maybe close to about 20 times or so pretty quickly, just like this. And then see if it builds up any pressure and it, it doesn't, that's pretty much a dead shock and that's what, exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the front, all the fronts and all the rears. So the shocks are built, now we can put our collars on. So the collars that we prepared earlier, you can just go ahead and install them onto the shock bodies. Now in the manual, it tells us the gap between this face and the top of the sh shock collar. Um, I'm actually gonna just take it all the way up and I have a method that I like to use when adjusting the shocks. So I'm gonna take it all the way up and I'll show you exactly what I do. We're gonna do this for all of them. I usually do this on the car, but I'll do it off the car to make it a little easier. But what I do is I'll take a Sharpie and I know that I'm going to install my shocks with the bleeder screw facing the outside. So I'll take a Sharpie and I'm going to just color the shock color just a little bit. And that way, when I make adjustments, I know if I'm making if I need to make small adjustments, I usually do adjustments in quarter turns or half turns. So this kind of helps me know when I'm adjusting on the fly that it's even all around. And then also, um, if I come after, if I have like a wreck or something, I can take a look and see if any of them have moved. So it's a good indication to help in that case. All right, so we're gonna use the shorter springs in the front and the longer springs in the rear. So what I like to do is I like to find the markings. We're gonna be using the gray in the front. So I'll put the gray indication on the top side and then go ahead and install our spring cup on the bottom so, and at this point if you want you can adjust the shock collars to be um, what the manual says but I'm just gonna wait until I have all my electronics on and everything so that way I can make the adjustments all at once there we go now we can grab our chassis and install our shocks. All right, so we're gonna do the front first. And it looks like we're going to install the shock in the outermost hole. So on the top, we're just gonna slide it on. We're gonna take a flanged M3 lock nut and install that. The one thing I dislike about the way these install is that typically once my electronics are in, 
you can't make these, you can't um, get a normal size nut driver in here, but this isn't so bad. And yes, this amount of movement on the shock is normal for an associated car. So next, we're gonna install the front shocks on the bottom. We're gonna need our M3 by 20 butt head cap screw. And like I said earlier, we're gonna be installing the shocks on the outermost hole. So I like to install the flange facing the rear of the car. Now we can install the rear shocks. So the rear shocks are gonna be uh, simple to install. We want the flange to face the plastic, like so, and the top just gonna go in the shock bushing. And we're gonna install the flange M3 lock nuts on both the top and bottom. All right. So that's it for bag nine. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did. Let me know down in the comments below if you had any issues and I'll do my best to help you out. Stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna be bag 10, which will be installing the electronics. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.